right? So Craig has a left quarter inch short leg. So that is the first indicator of where he's going to be biomechanically. So like, just like when you cut a chair leg, okay, a short leg represents the side where the body should lean to. And then biomechanically, he's got a left short leg, so he should lean to the left, and his body's somewhere up here above the box or the upper part of the box, and the head and the neck are going to actually create a balancing mechanism, so he should have a right bow. That's what we see if he's biomechanically correct. Okay, come on up. Or one, one, uh, one pathway. The thing that we look at diagnostically is the uh, digital device, the anatometer. And what we see just visually is a center post. You can see he has a right low shoulder. So that's going to be the side that we're going to. That's where he's compressed on. That's going to be the side that he's up on the table. All right. If you notice, he has a left head tilt. So as he bows right, and he's way off to the right, the head with its writing reflex is going to bring his head back to the left, okay? You can see the lasers here. He has a large twist in his pelvis anterior on the right. His pelvic, uh, his weight rot his weight differential is he has 27.2 more pounds on the right, and his twist He has nine millimeters of anterior rotation on the right in the right pelvis. So he's going to the right side, twisting forward, bowing to the right, head tilts back. If I put together with the leg, he has a left short leg that has a compensation that goes back right. He must have had a blow to the body, a second, second misalignment because he's on the right side. He should not be with a left short leg. And then his head tilts back. So the first thing that we must get out is we must get out this compression. The direct indicator of the compression is the pelvic twist. So we're going to get the nine millimeters out first, and the way we do that is we're going to drop the head out with a down headpiece and allow the body to open up with the cup up. So he's right side bow, we're going to put the right side up and allow it to open. Okay, let's go inside. So this is a QSM3 headpiece. It has a thick support with an ear hole. It's made out of aluminum, so it has a really low um, impact, okay? which allows less energy needed. It has a movable support, so you can drop the head out and it fits any head. It's a great headpiece. Okay, come on down. So we're gonna have right side up because he has a right compression or a right bow. Now his body sits like this on the anatometer and what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a down headpiece and we're gonna drop the head. Now it's important that we close the contact on the opposite side because we want the force to come around. All right, so we're gonna allow the head to fall still needs more because he has a lot of lateral flexion and let it fall. All right, so now we're on the left side. Now he had a right anterior. So we're going to drop the head, which means I'm going to contact the left side and um, create a closed kinetic chain on the left side. I'm going to lift the chin because if he was an RA on the anatometer, right and anterior, and I'm dropping the head out, I'm going to contact the left posterior quadrant. All right, I'm going to push the pelvis back because he was an RA, so I'm going to push it backwards. I'm going to stand in front of him, and my leverage points are this, are I to S, I to S, and A to P with inferior torque, okay? Inferior torque because I'm contacting the posterior pelvis. The posterior pelvis is on the left side, okay? So it'll look like this. I to S, I to S, I to S. Feeling for resistance. Feels like a band. It relaxed, now I'm going to go A to P, tissue pull, tissue pull until it relaxes, relaxed, and you can feel resistance with the side of your hand. Now I'm going to use some torque. Come right over here with me. Get back right up against her. Okay, this is not clearing, so I'm going to go back and make sure I clear the other places. I to S. Can we take the jacket off just so I can really see the points of your shoulders? A to P. And I to S. And this is all by feel, guys. This is all by feel. This is not just a mechanical adjustment, one, two, hit the ball. It's a matter of, there it goes, and it relaxed. Come on up. It's a matter of feeling resistance, understanding the pathway. He bowed to the right, he was forward. So I came up, allowed the body to open, and this pelvis turned it P to A. All right, let's check. Okay, so now we're going to recheck him. You can already see that he's sitting better on the anatometer, but he still is a little off to the right, okay, and he's still bowing a little bit right. So he's down to 9.7 pounds from, I think it was 27. I'm going to check the rotation on him here. 
like this. It's got dark pants on, so we got to use this. Okay. The twist went from a anterior nine down to a posterior two. We call that a minus two. So this means because of this, we have completely decompressed him. So what we have to go to now is after decompression is we look at his head tilt. And he has a left head tilt. So I gotta get this left head tilt out. So now we're gonna put him left side up. So now where we're at is we're gonna let that head, he has a left head tilt, and we want that to drop. So we're closing the kinetic chain on the right side. So if we remember originally, he was anterior pelvis. So we're gonna push this pelvis forward, okay? Because that's posterior on the left side. We're going to tuck the chin, which now we're a down head piece, a down head piece with the chin tucked. So we've got the RA quad quadrant, okay? And then I'm just going to come in. Same thing, I'm going to go I to S because I want the head to fall out. And I'm going to go P to A because P to A on this side, on the closed connect chain, on the opposite side is A to P. Just come right under the resistance. And I'm just coming up and I'm actually doing an I to S and an A to P, com a P to A combo. Just let it relax. Just put your mass against it, nice and easy. And now I'm going to use superior torque because I'm looking at an anterior pelvis on the other side. Good. Nice gliding through it. Gliding through it. Check all three things and it relaxes. Come on up. So what we did first is we decompressed. If he did not decompress on one side, I would have flipped him over because he has two pathways that need decompression, kind of like an S-curve, all right? So now we got that out of there. So the second thing that we did is we went after the head tilt. The head tilt is totally out of there. However, he's still a little bit off to the right side. So now we're able to address the frontal plane. I'm going to check with the lasers where his rotation is. Okay, still got a little bit of rotation, nothing major, and his weight differential from 27 is at a 12. So now I got to take care of the frontal plane. I took care of the decompression, pelvis is clear. I took care of the head tilt, it's clear. Now we're going to put it up, up on center. He leans to the right, so we're going to go to an up head piece on the right side and allow him to come close this kinetic chain on the right side and allow to access this pathway, break the resistance in this pathway. Again, this is not about moving the bones, it's get accessing the pathway, removing the resistance and releasing the body to its tensile orthogonal position. Let's go. All right, so now we're going to close the right side because he's leaning to the right. We're addressing the right frontal plane. It's the first up head piece that we're using. So I'm going to close the right side. Okay. I'm going to tuck the chin because he's anterior, so it's the right anterior quadrant. Create tension, and now we're going to set this proprioceptively. It's an originally an anterior, so now we've got tension. Pelvic rotation. Uh, pelvis is in its mirror image telling the body and it's, and it's cerebellum, hey, this is where we want it. We're going to input into a big mechanoreceptor um, area right up here. We've got the RA quadrant. We're going to deal with the frontal plane. And all I need on this leverage points is S to I, S to I, S to I. So we go right to left and A to P, A to P. And superior torque. Why superior torque? Because I'm contacting the anterior, the right side, and the pelvis there is anterior originally. So I'm just checking those pathways. S to I, S to I, S to I, S to I. There's a lot of stuff here. That's why I wasn't coming to the frontal plane. So this is not about just one vector fits all. This is a concept called playing through. Okay? Check the decompression. Remove the decompression. Now where's the ball lay? Okay? Now hit the ball again from where it's at. Get the head tilt out. That's where that protocol comes in. Now that's out. Now we've got another access, another pathway down his body, and now we're getting out the frontal plane. All right? Playing through. A dynamic correction. The first one in chiropractic. All S to I. S to I. I'm actually coming at a 45, so I'm getting some A to P in there. Okay, it's really simple. Good. Doesn't take force. Come on up. So now we're done. And if you look at him, he's actually off onto the left side. So we call that better than perfect. When the body breaks down, it collapses. And when it releases tensegrally, it actually will come to the other side, just like a spring would. And now that tells you that you've totally cleared the pathway and the body will come up on its center. It's now four and a half pounds on the left, which is a minus four and a half pounds from about wherever he was, 27, 28 pounds on the right. So we've moved uh, 30 something pounds 
and we have actually gone from an anterior nine to you can read these. This says 424, this says 426, which means uh, two millimeters that this pelvis is back. So we've gone to minus two. So we've done better than perfect on either side. His head tilt is actually leaning just a hair left. I'll leave that there because I don't want to mess anything up, but I'll get that out next time or hope that the body just deals with it.